So the scripture reading today is from Romans 8, 31 through 39. Probably a very familiar verse for many of us, or scripture for many of us. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God who did not behold God's own God who did not behold, withhold God's own son, but gave him up for all of us. With God not with him, will God not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, we, uh, uh, yes, who are raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? It is as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. So please pray with me. Holy One, as we embrace the gift of story in many forms, may our spirits be open to you, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today, we continue our summer series, bringing children's books into conversation with scripture, and we do so today uh, bringing the truth that uh, Laura just read for us, the truth proclaimed in Romans chapter 8 into conversation uh, with a children's classic of the last few decades, The Kissing Hand. How many people know this story? A few. Good. Uh, so it was written by Audrey Penn and illustrated by Ruth E. Harper and Nancy M. Leake. Uh, and we are blessed as today uh, our very own new family and intergenerational mission ministry coordinator, uh, the Reverend Laura Burge, is going to read that for us. So I'm going to gather right up front with my children. We'll put the illustrations up, but if there's any other of the young at heart that want to come up, you are welcome to do so. He said, and he told his mother, I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing on my swing. Please, may I stay home with you? Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently, even if they seem strange and scary at first. But you will love school once you start. You'll make new friends and play with new toys, read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret that will make your nights at school seem as warm and cozy as your days at home. 
Chester wiped away his tears and looked interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, said Mrs. Raccoon. I learned it from my mother, and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What's that? I'll show you. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread open his tiny fingers into a fan. Leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester felt his mother's kiss rush from his hand, up his arm, and into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with a special warmth. Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump to your face fill you with, and fill you with toasty, warm thoughts. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry. When you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. Chester loved his kissing hand. Now he knew his mother's love would go with him wherever he went, even to school. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he told her. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large, familiar fingers into a fan. Next, he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Now you have a kissing hand too, he told her, and with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. Mrs. Raccoon watched Chester scamper across a tree limb and enter school. And as the hoot owl rang in the new school year, she pressed her left hand to her cheek and smiled. The warmth of Chester's kiss filled her heart with special words. Chester loves you, it sang. Chester loves you. Thank you very much, Laura, for that lovely reading. So the kissing hand that Chester's mom gave to Chester and the one he gave back to her are symbols of the deep bond of love. So when I think about those kissing hands, I can't help but think about Romans chapter 8, where the Apostle Paul boldly affirms the deep and lasting bond created by God's love. Paul boldly proclaims that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ. God's love goes with us wherever we go, and just like Chester's kissing hand, it can never be washed off, lost, or taken away. As Paul writes, neither death nor life nor angels, powers of the heavenly realm, nor rulers, powers of the earthly realm, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all of creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God loves us. God's love goes with us forever and ever, no matter what. This is a deep truth of our faith. And like many truths of our faith, it's easy to say it like we believe it. 
but it's much harder to live like we believe it. For life is full of times when we, like Chester, have to set out into unknown territories, not knowing what lies ahead, which, come to think of it, has been all of life for the last 14 months. 16 months, 17 months, I lose track. (laughs) When we faced the unknown, reacting as Chester did with a desire to stay in place, stay with and in the familiar, is very common. We are creatures of comfort, and navigating the unknown is uncomfortable. But when we're faced with the unknown, that's exactly when it is most important to live believing in and holding fast to the durable, staying power of God's love. That's when we're called to take courage from the truth that God's love will never let us go. That's when we should call to mind the moments when we felt God kissing our very own hands. Those moments when God has made God's love personally known to us. Perhaps at our baptisms. Perhaps at the bedside of a loved one. Perhaps in a moment of deepest joy, perhaps in a moment of deepest sorrow. But that's when we are called to be like Chester and wrap our hands around that gift of God's love and dare to reach back to God and saying, okay, I will be brave because I trust in your love and I love you too. And then, with that kissing hand, we set out. For unknowns, challenges, and fears will never cease. My kids and I were watching a movie on Friday, The Good Dinosaur. Anyone seen that one? It's one of those Pixar movies that didn't hit the top of the box box office but it boldly proclaims that there is no way around our fears. The only way forward in the midst of unknowns, challenges, and fears is to move forward through them with courage. And we as Christians do that by drawing our courage that is born from this truth that God's love goes with us And God's love will never let us go. Nothing can separate us from that love. Nothing present, nothing future, neither death nor life. God's love endures. So it's easier said than done. And whenever that's true, the best first step is prayer. So let's conclude with a word of prayer. Eternal love, you created us in love, called us to love, and love us beyond all measure. Your love stretches farther than our imaginations can conceive. Your love is stronger than our hearts can comprehend. Your love endures beyond all we believe possible. When we falter, when we stumble, When we face the unknown or are stricken with fear and anxiety, call us back to the truth of your love. Ground us in the power of your love and send us out in the courage of your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.